Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's panel discussion here on the Solano College Sports Network. I'm Josh Kinder, joined with the Poficators, which are Isabel Medina, Marge Stoner, Nancy Salcedo, and Rachel Cohn. Now, what was your guys' overall topic in this project, and how did you come up with the idea? Marge? We came up with, as a consensus, we came up with Canvas, but we first bounced around a bunch of different ideas. But as a group, we wanted a topic that was actually going to make an influence on students' lives to make it better. So we started talking and bouncing ideas, and then we somehow came up with Canvas. And what was your guys' goals, and how did you accomplish those goals? So first we went to Poff and asked him, uh, how can we go about our project? He suggested to go to uh, the Vice President of Academic Affairs, David William, yeah. and we had a sit-down meeting with him. We asked him, you know, how can we encourage our professors, our teachers, to use Canvas more? And he suggested to talk to Erica Beam, which would know a little more. And she actually knew, um, more than a little she knew a lot more and he had talked about her saying you know she's this great person someone who will probably know you know more and be better to talk to and talking to her just I mean we first talked to her just over video conference and she really did you know we were coming into it thinking you know cannabis is so great cannabis is beneficial and you know we thought that we would have to tell people that but for her to already know how great it was and already know how beneficial it was it was, I mean, just kind of like, not shocking, but almost because, you know, we all thought that maybe nobody else knew how great Canvas was, and that's why nobody was using it, but she really did, and, you know, just talking to her, she suggested, you know, come and, you know, present for some teachers for me, and it was on her flex day, which was um, an optional flex day, which is also... One of the other reasons why Canvas doesn't get noticed as much because mandatory flex days are for those um, more essential and more important, you know, classes and topics. And Canvas is just kind of put on the optional days for those teachers that they're like, oh, I guess I'll see what it is. Or for those teachers that use it and want more knowledge. So going into that meeting, we gave, we all gave student testimonies to about seven or eight teachers who some used but most didn't use Canvas. And I personally, um, myself, talked about how Canvas could be beneficial for the teachers. And I told them, you know, you can put your syllabus up there. You can put homework up there, you know, notes, PowerPoints, essay prompts. You know, there's a calendar up there that has, you know, your to-dos. And we all got the opportunity to actually um, speak. So not just me, but everybody else as well. Yeah, I personally spoke about grades and how I like to see my grade progress as the semester goes by. And I also like the what if grade, which uh, you are able to put, what grade can I get on this final to boost my grade to an A? And I really like that. And seeing how, or what I need to work on or what grade I need to get on a quiz to make my grade better. I talked about the files. The actual teacher asks, is it something that do we actually really use, which I told them we did because the files, if I miss a class, which yeah. you don't always want to miss as a student, it's there. I can get all the information I need without having to contact other students or pester the professor who's busy. Accessibility is there for any time that I need as long as they put the information there. So I brought up um, how I had just graduated high school and it was my first semester at Solano and how Canvas was such an easy transition um, because back in high school we used something called Aries and it had the same objectives that Canvas did. And how did you guys overall like prepare for this testimonial presentation, Isabel? Um, so we all met up as a group a week before. Uh, we met up at Panera. We came out with a basic outline of uh, the main topics of that we wanted to bring up and then we all discussed what we just shared with you guys um, of why Canvas was so beneficial. And it wasn't the only uh, presentation or testimony you guys did, correct? No, it actually wasn't. Um, Josh and I actually got the opportunity to speak again and we actually kind of just brought up the same same topics, you know, why we thought it was beneficial but the you know difference between both meetings is we went with Erica Beam and presented to the DEC and it was a group of probably more te I'd say maybe like 11 12 teachers and if not you know all of them then almost most of the entire group used Canvas so what we were talking about they already knew I mean, we were bringing up, you know, you can put Canvas, you know, you can put this in Canvas and that in Canvas. 
and they were like yeah we already do that and some of them even had questions about canvas there was a professor there who said you know i put my attendance grade on there and you know it's worth so much and, you know people that don't show up they start to freak out you know about their grades and he said you know do you guys have an idea on how i can do it differently or you know what i can do and just you know to go in there and have someone ask us our personal opinion you know how do we think we can change it and that you know was actually I was like you know he wants our opinion you know and Erica also talked about maybe we could go back again you know because so far according to her you know we're this kind of little beacon of light and you know these teachers may not know how we feel you know we're sitting here thinking that canvas is so great but when we don't say hey canvas is so great nobody's ever gonna know and that's why it was so great to go to both those meetings and just let them know how we feel personally. And how did you guys feel after the presentation? I personally felt very great and I felt like the faculty responded very well to us. They asked us a lot of questions. They seemed very happy to have students up there telling uh, faculty, you know, what we would like as students to see be done in this campus. Yeah, um, afterwards I'd say I felt really accomplished because, you know, going into college you kind of there's that not only that age gap but that it's a big gap you know your students and this campus is so big you don't think that you can talk to professors that you don't know or talk to someone like Erica Beam or David Williams and you know to go and to talk to them and have them ask questions I think it was you know just like a really good feeling overall to know that your opinion does matter but if you don't say your opinion, then they'll never know. It was good that we were actually heard. That was the nice thing. Teachers are actually happy. The teachers that were in that meeting that we were, the, all five of us were in, were very happy to hear our perspective, which was good to hear that they actually care. This is just not a, a going through the motions for them, that they were hearing us and they actually want to make a change that's going to be better for them and for the students, academically speaking. Isabel, how did you feel after the whole testimonial? Um, I felt like they actually hear hearing. I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, <You're> fine. <clears throat> um, I felt after the testimony that um, you don't see um, a big group of kids often going to big people like that and saying what they want to. So I just feel like students don't go out and say their words and the people don't get a reaction from us. Well, uh, we'll be right back with the second segment right after this. If you have an interest in a career in sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the scenes or on camera, then this is the class for you. Class is held every Wednesday from 1.30 to 4.30 in room 121 alongside the library building. For more information, contact Greg Poff, that's me, at Solano. Edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports, it's an education. Welcome back. In the first segment, we talked about what Canvas was, why it was an issue, and how we, they were able to accomplish their goals. Now in this segment, we're going to talk about individually how it went well as a group. Now, how did you guys come up with like the roles in this group? Rachel? Um, actually, it was just kind of like seeing who fit best where. There was um, never really one person I feel that was like the boss and said, you have to do this and you have to do this. But um, I feel like Josh was really kind of like the person that roped everybody in, he was the one that was putting the emails out and, you know, talking to Erica. And, you know, we're kind of all going to him like, what Erica say? What Erica say? Because, <laughs> you know, he's the one that's that direct line to her. And then as far as, you know, keeping people, like, together and keeping the peace, I feel like that was really Marge. You know, we kind of just <laughs> see where everybody fits and, you know, you kind of find your own spot. And, you know, part of a group is just working together. 
So, you know, being able to, you know, be working on something and someone else saying, you know, why don't you try this or how about this? You know, you're not really alone in like one specific spot where you're like, oh, I, I have to do the end and everybody else has to do this. So to be able to just kind of come together and work on everything together, it was, you know, kind of better than having just, you know, one specific slot for everybody. And because you guys kind of had an idea of what grew, like which person did what role, did that kind of help out with any like disagreements or decisions or did you guys even have any? Well, we kind of, we went back when we had maybe a lighter, a little minor disagreement went back to our group contract, which mm -hmm. helped. We actually modified our contract at one point just to mm -hmm. address our little issue about communication. And granted, this is a communications class, so we were learning that we had to work on our own communication as a group, just as our my example would be at the beginning, which is always that we finished our honeymoon phase, which we thought was really great, but yeah. then communicating with each other by texting or phone calls, we weren't as good at that at the beginning, so we had to amend our contract and saying somebody in our group has to answer, so that was our our low point that we got back to the high point so now we know that we should be answering to one to be polite to each other because mm -hmm. we're a group and so know what's going on and two it's to make sure we're actually practicing what we're learning and doing it yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah and i feel like that was that was maybe like the only thing and because we work so well together it was just kind of like hey guys next time you know can you text me back and we were just like oh yeah yeah sure like we'll remember next time and it wasn't like, oh, well, I texted back, so, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Because yeah. I feel like we all kind of got along. And for me personally, that was like the one thing that I was not necessarily nervous about, but kind of weary because we're going to, you know, you're with this group th through the end. And I was like, you know, what if we don't work well together? Or what if, you know, it turns out somebody's a slacker or somebody's like, you know, it's their way or no way. But I feel like we all kind of just fit together and it works really well for us. I also felt like we addressed the problems as soon as they happened. We didn't just kind of avoid it. We actually talked about it right away. We were like, hey, we don't like this. Can you kind of fix this? Or let's amend our contract and fix it. And yeah, I think we, we actually just, addressed yeah. our issues then and there yeah. instead of letting it fester, letting exactly. it fester, Definitely. which I think would have been worse for us. So yeah. we actually addressed it, even though it was uncomfortable, but that was the good thing. We were yeah. actually practicing what we're supposed to be learning and try mm -hmm. to address it to help us, I think, later on in life and yeah. whatever issue we have. And now individually, what was like the hardest thing for being in the group or most difficult task that each one of you had? Isabel, let's start with you. Um, well, when we first started and we had to, I know it's a communications class, but the word group, I was not a fan of it and I was like nervous <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, I just didn't want to do it. But, um, I, and I also felt like in my group, I was like the baby of the group mm -hmm. and I just felt like I was just going to do as I was told. But actually like my group, um, they actually helped me to like, they were like, this is your part and this is what you're going to do. So they like forced me into like doing my part <laughs> and it actually like, it made me a better, like I, th I feel like I progressed through the semester. So I appreciate that. Uh, for me, personally, I, well, I've always been shy to voice my opinion, and I kind of get scared of, like, going against what somebody else says, but mm -hmm. um, Marge actually helped me and said, hey, you know, like, tell them what you think, so I did, and it helped me a lot to voice my opinion and not, like, be quiet when I feel like something should be different, so it helped me a lot. Yeah, and I think, um, for me personally, like, one of the more difficult things it was is, like, you have to meet outside of class. And that was kind of different for me because in previous groups, it's like someone will be like, okay, I'll, I'll make a Google slide and everybody, you know, just put your stuff on there. Mm -hmm. But in this one, it's like you guys need to meet outside of class, discuss that. And although it was, you know, a drive for me, it was beneficial, you know, exponentially in the long run because it's like getting that outside interaction other than class where in the classroom you feel the need to like sit there and be okay with everything and say, oh yeah, our group's doing so great, and you know, everybody loves each other. But like, outside of class, you see someone's real character, and to be able to see, you know, my whole group outside of class, and we're just like, this great group of people that, you know, laugh together, joke together, and it's not just like, oh, we have all this work to do, and we have to be super serious, but to, you know, come to this understanding that, yes, we're all classmates, but yes, I can now finally say that I feel like we can all be friends as well. For me, it was, I'm the more mature of our entire group, which is okay. It came with a life experience since I've done a lot of other things already with group. I was a little weary about the group because I've been in groups and 
good or bad, sometimes you work more. I was a little leery because we didn't know each other, but we worked well together. Being the more mature, I'm glad that you guys were actually able to listen to what I say when you kind of, we kind of have to hone in, which I found frustrating sometimes, but mm -hmm. you guys were listening that it's, it's good for us to try to get things done. So yes. that was, I was appreciative. So learning how to work with people younger than me was something <laughs> I am learning, which is a good thing. And it's something of experience that I will take with me because we're all going to get older. We're all going to work in different fields. So we have to know how to work with every kind of age group as we yeah. get older. So for me, that was the good and the bad. And what have you guys learned in like just this first group activity that you can apply into your daily life? Rachel? Um, to not be afraid to, you know, speak up because going into those meetings with Erica Beam, you're talking to people that are not only older than you, but also are, you know, I guess more important. And, you know, you're just a student. You have all these people that are teachers who are, whether they're, you know, new teachers that are two, three years in, or old teachers who have been here for, you know, 10, 15 plus years, just to learn that, you know, you can talk to them and don't be afraid to talk to them, you know, be able to, you know, stand there or sit there and say, listen, like, we feel that Canvas is beneficial. Here's some, you know, things why we feel it's beneficial. And just not to be afraid because, you know, from experience, we now know that they, actually want to listen and you know them listening and us talking to them kind of helped me understand that you know I, I can talk to them. I'm um, adding to what Rachel said I also feel the same way I feel like it's a good experience for us to be able to talk to professors teachers elderly people and um, tell them what you know what yeah. we want things to change and I really like that personally. For me, it's listening to each other and listening to my classmates and reminding myself it's okay to say what I think to my other classmates or other coworkers so they would listen my voice and hear what I'm trying to say, not kind of be quiet and kind of go with it and it doesn't always work out so well. So it's being able to speak out. Isabel? To me, it's probably um, hearing out my uh, classmates because I just feel like I'm a person that keeps to myself. Like, it's a group project, but I would like take the role in high school and I would just say, let me do it because I, I like I like my ideas and I feel like my ideas are going to be great so uh, <laughs> like during this uh, process like I learned like okay my classmates do have great ideas and I felt like it just made um, all our ideas stronger and we came to like a great conclusion. Yeah. And y how have you guys he heard or learned anything that so far with Canvas like it's starting to be like and starting to go into effect? For me, my actual professor, one of the, when we were doing our research for our project, I talked to my psychology professor, because she's a director, I guess, for academic, uh, in fact, I'm doing well for, for teachers. She's a director for something for the teachers. Mm -hmm. But she had told us that, or she told me today that it was actually discussed during the Senate, uh, teacher Senate meeting yesterday about our idea in Canvas or the use of Canvas. So it kind of feels like our idea or our perspective is actually being heard and something's actually going to happen to encourage teachers to use it. Wow, that's great. Obviously, you guys are making a huge difference, and hopefully we'll see more teachers using Canvas throughout the semester. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. I want to thank the Poficators for joining me today. I'm Josh Kinder. You're watching the Sonic College Sports Network, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>